Greetings fellow humans, I'm Emily Cannon and today we're going to go over how to do a proper beer tasting. Welcome to another video. I want to start this off by saying when you're doing a beer tasting, these are all just guidelines. There aren't really any strict rules when it comes right down to it. So if you have to improvise or work with what you've got, then go ahead. The important thing is that you just do the tasting and you have fun with it. When you're preparing for a beer tasting, you want to make sure that you have a quiet, preferably private place. That way you can devote all of your attention to the beer. Think of it as like meditating over the beer. It's a fun, nice, enjoyable experience and it really helps if you don't have any distractions. Speaking of distractions, you don't want any distracting smells around you either. So that means you don't want to do it in a kitchen where you've got a nice stew going over the crock pot. You don't want to be wearing any perfume or cologne and even lipstick you want to avoid because your lips are so close to your nose it can really interfere with the tasting and aroma is such a big part of what you're going to be doing. You also don't want to eat anything right before doing the tasting. So I would say wait like a half an hour to an hour before doing a tasting after you eat. Just that way you don't have any extra flavors or, or tastes or smells coming from your mouth. Something else that's interesting to note, your senses of smell and taste are actually a lot sharper in the morning. That being said, it's not always convenient or appropriate to do a beer tasting in the morning. It's totally fine if you want to wait till the end of the day after work and do your tasting then. You'll still be able to get a lot out of it. Now let's go over what you might want to have with you during your tasting. I'm going to start off by mentioning water. Now you might not need it, but in my opinion, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. The thing about it is you might get thirsty, you might want to rinse your mouth out after a sip, so then you can go back for another sip with a, maybe a little bit of a, a fresher palate, whatever. I would just say probably best to have some water with you. I would also recommend having a guided evaluation sheet handy, especially if you're new. It can help walk you through the steps and look at what you are looking for with the beer. That way it's not too much guesswork and you have something to adhere to. Personally, I would recommend Beerology by Mirella Amato. Um, this book is really great if you want something that gives you a good overview of a lot of different aspects of beer, but isn't too dense. It's, it's an easy read and um, definitely good if you're just starting out especially. In the back of this book, there is a beer evaluation sheet um, and it goes over some of the categories that I'm going to be talking about today. I think this one's really helpful. I've used it more than once. Um, and also, so you don't have to buy the book, although you probably should, but um, if you want, I'm going to, I think, link down below. There is a free version of that sheet online and I know she updates it as well. You also might want to consider having a beer styles guide. That way, whatever style of beer you're going to be drinking, you can look at what you're supposed to find and what you can generally expect of that style of beer. It's something that's really helpful, again, if you're just new and starting out with this whole process. One that I would recommend is the Beer Judge Certification Program Style Guide. There's an app that I have on my iPad that's really convenient and it goes into great detail about what to expect from different beer styles. And you may want to reference it before doing your tasting. You may want to reference it after your tasting and compare notes. Totally up to you with whatever you're trying to get from this beer tasting. For my personal tastings, I usually have either a recording device or uh, my journal on, on me where I talk about and write down just the different beers that I taste just to make note and keep track of what I'm doing. It helps um, to solidify what you're thinking and processing and what you're noticing with the beer if you take the time to either verbalize or write down what you notice. And it's also cool to be able to go back and reference your previous tastings and, and taste the same beer again later. And that way, 
you see how much you've grown in your beer tastings. An optional thing that I should maybe mention, I don't have it with me here, but you may want to consider having a spit bucket. Um, that way, in case you don't want to swallow the beer um, for whatever reason, I've had that happen where I was doing a beer tasting and the beer, once I opened it and tasted it, was definitely not fresh. It was pretty gross and so I had to run to the sink to spit it out. But you may want to consider having it, again, one of those better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Or if you're just doing a, a single tasting for one beer, you probably don't need an entire bucket. You could just have like an extra empty glass handy. Of course, you're also going to need to have the appropriate glassware. I have here a Teku glass and I will uh, put a link to that in the description as well. Um, it is specifically engineered for beer tastings and I'm a huge fan of it. It works really well for me. I get a lot of the aroma and flavor that I haven't gotten from other glasses. That being said, if you don't have one and you're not interested in getting one, that's totally fine. You can also use a white wine glass, for instance. What you want is a stemmed glass that has a wider base and tapers off at the top. This allows you to capture a lot of aroma that would otherwise be lost. Um, that being said, again, work with what you've got. For my first ever tasting, I used a, it was a clear coffee mug um, because I didn't actually have a, a, an appropriate wine glass. So that way I could use the handle since I didn't have a stem, but still look at it. And it kind of tapered, it kind of worked. I still got a lot out of the tasting. So again, just use what you've got. Oh, and be sure that right before you pour the beer, you want to rinse your glass out with cold water. It helps adjust the temperature of the glass to prime it for the beer, and it also removes any dust particles that might be present in the glass. Last but not least, you want to have your beer. So if you're not experienced with different beer styles and the appropriate serving temperature, sometimes on the bottle it will tell you, or can, it will uh, tell you what temperature it should be served at, or a quick Google search will, will let you know. But as you may know from the previous video, um, if a beer is too cold, you're not going to be able to get as much out of the, the smell and taste as you would if it's at its appropriate serving temperature. So in all likelihood, you want to pull the beer out for probably at least 15 minutes, pull it out of the fridge before you do your tasting. Moving on to the categories you'll be paying attention to when doing your tasting. The first one, the really big one, is aroma. Consider things like, is it a very strong aroma? What's the balance of it? Is it sweet? Is it sharp? Is it sour? What are some of the malt uh, smells that you're picking up? Is it bready? Is it toasty? Is it maybe more chocolatey? Is it sweet? Again, that could be indicative of the malt used. And then what are the hop smells that you get? Is it sort of a fruity, maybe citrusy, maybe a little more piney? There are all kinds of, is it earthy? There are a bunch of different uh, malt scents and hop scents. And again, that's where an evaluation sheet can help you out if you're just starting and you're not sure what maybe all of the categories are. And then when considering aroma, also just what are your opinions? Do you like the way it smells? Does it smell appetizing? Does it gross you out? Make note of all of those things. It's just good to keep track of all of that. And um, we'll actually be revisiting aroma later once we get to a different category. Personally, I like to assess aroma first and foremost before any other category. However, some people in some evaluation sheets will um, swap aroma with the next category I'm going to be talking about, which is the appearance of the beer. When assessing the appearance, you want to consider things like what color is the beer? How is the clarity of the beer too? Is it clear? Is it hazy? Is there sediment in it? Um, think about the head of the beer, which is that foam that's right at the top of the beer. Maybe also take a look at the lace as well. Now lace, beer lace, is a term you'll probably hear me using a lot. It's um, 
when you have the foam on the side of the glass and you tilt the glass, it's the foam that clings to the side. So you might want to consider the lace as well, look at maybe the size of the bubbles, see does it stick really well to the glass. If not, that could be indicative of an issue with the beer or it could be indicative that your glass isn't properly cleaned. And then of course, what are your opinions on the appearance of the beer? Does it look appetizing? Does it look a little funky? Is there something weird in it that probably shouldn't be there? Again, these are all things that are clues to help you figure out if this beer was properly stored, if it's good, if it's fresh, or just forming your own opinions when it comes to figuring out what you like when it comes to beer. The third category you're going to be assessing is flavor. And you are considering a lot of the same things that you do with the aroma. However, the, f the flavor of it can be very different from the scent of it. There have been plenty of times where I've been assessing the aroma of, the, of a beer and expected the flavor to be similar, but the flavor adds a whole different layer or it could be completely different. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, you're going to be assessing, is it strong? What's the balance? Is it sweet? Is it bitter? Is it sour? Um, what are some of the malt notes you're picking up? What are some of those hop notes you're picking up? And again, your opinions, do you like the way it tastes? The fourth category is mouthfeel, which just means how does it feel in your mouth? What's the body like? Is it light? Is it full? How's the carbonation? Is it lively? Is it kind of dull carbonation? What are some of the sensations that you get in your mouth? If it's gross, if something's wrong with it, it might be a little slimy. Um, it could be like a lingering mouth feel. There, there's a lot to assess there. And then do you like it? Do you like the way it feels in your mouth? Then on to my personal favorite category, the aftertaste otherwise known in scientific terms as retronasal olfaction. It's really cool because you have taste buds in, way back in your nasal cavity. So when you do the aftertaste, you assess it by keeping your mouth closed and exhaling through your nose, and you're going to be getting some flavors combined with smell. It's a really cool sensation. Um, and you're going to be getting, it could be the same as the taste and the, the aroma of the beer, it could add a whole new layer onto it. When assessing the aftertaste, consider things like what's the length of it, what's the intensity of it, what are some of the flavors you get, what are some of the sensations you get, and again, do you like it? Finally, you want to make note of your overall impressions of the beer. Was it well crafted? Does it taste like it was fresh and stored properly? Does it taste like there's something off with it? And also, do you just personally like it? It can be a really well crafted, really fresh beer, but just you don't like it and that's totally fine. So just consider all of that and make notes of your overall impressions. Well, we've gotten all of that stuff out of the way, so now it's time to go through the actual steps and the process of doing a tasting. I just rinsed out my teku glass with some cold water to prime it for the tasting. I'm going to open this beer and I'm going to pour it directly down the center of the glass and I'm going to pull it, pour it so it's about one third full. You don't want it to be too much. Um, okay, so do you get any smells from just the tabletop and the pouring? You might, you might not. Then you're going to consider doing a, a drive-by sniffing. So. You want to keep it about, mm, I'd say about six to eight inches away because there are, or away from your nose because there are some highly volatile chemicals that might be present in beer and it's better to acclimate your nose by doing just a little drive-by like that um, because they're better smelled from a distance. Okay, I, I definitely was able to pick up on some of the, those scents. But the next step is to do a little swirl and that just... Um, it gets those aromas nice and primed for you to sniff because the next step is to do a short sniff. You put your nose directly into the glass and you do a big inhale and just pay attention to those smells. It might help to close your eyes. Um, again, this is where a private space might come in handy so you don't look silly and maybe don't post it on the internet so it's there forever for everyone to see. 
So after doing that short sniff, you want to taste it. Just bring the glass right up to your mouth and uh, sip some of the beer and keep it in your mouth. Swirl it around a little bit. That way the beer just hits all of those taste buds, all the different parts of your mouth, so you can really pay attention to the taste and to the, the mouth feel. And then once you swallow, keep your mouth closed um, and just exhale through the nose. that's that. So when you're writing things down or recording things, don't worry about filling it all out in one go, one sip. Feel free to take several uh, sips and sniffs just as you're working out the kinks and how to do it all. Also, if you find it works better for you to maybe break things down even further, just, just do it one little bit at a time, or maybe mix up the categories, maybe you like doing appearance before you do the aroma, Whatever, it's whatever works for you. You've got to figure out your own process when it comes to tasting because you're much better able to appreciate all of the craftsmanship that went into this beer. And I would recommend, you know, maybe start with a beer you know you like, one you've had plenty of times when doing a tasting, so you kind of have an idea as to what to expect, and I guarantee you will still be surprised if you sit down and do a proper beer tasting. I know it can seem intimidating at first if you haven't done this before and it seems like there is a lot to process, and there is, but practice makes perfect and the only way to practice this is to go forth and drink beer. So go ahead, bottoms up, cheers you guys, and thanks so much for watching this video. Please, please, please um, give me a, a little comment. Feel free to ask any questions. I would be so happy to answer any questions you guys might have. If you liked this video, please press the like button. I'm a really new channel right now, so I'm just trying to work off of feedback from you guys. So again, thanks so much, and uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!